What's happening when you get home? Sleepless nights, slightly depression, going through um, moments of anxiety. So how have you gotten to a place where you're okay with that? I haven't. The feeling of loneliness or feeling of just being alone itself is just, it's hard. What has been the thing that you faced that hurt the most? Being lied to. Mm. Being led on. I don't think my expectations is too high. What are yours? Hmm. Let's go! Well, if I'm the problem, let me know. Ooh. Are you single? Mm-hmm. So men out there, if you want Gabby, keep it straight mm. up. Yeah, keep it straight up, man. What up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the RXS Podcast. We got a really special guest in the building, Gabby Smith. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How's everything going? Everything is good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Right now, today, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. Mm. I'm feeling good. That's good. Mm-hmm. So I want to do like I do everybody, and I want to take you all the way back to the beginning. Okay. Where was Gabby Smith born? <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Mm, you say where? Yes. Um, Stokes, North Carolina, in the country. Gabby, I never heard of Stokes in my life until right now. What what that's at? In the country. Like what's what's the big city that is near? Mm, Robinsonville, Bethel. Oh yeah, I know, I know Robinsonville. Williamston. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was it like growing up there? <laughs> In a family of 14, let's see. It was a lot. 14. (laughs) 14. Seven girls, seven boys. And where do you fit in? I'm the baby girl. Oh. Uh Uh-huh. Oh. (laughs) I did not know that. Mm -hmm. The baby of 17. Mm -hmm. So did they all like. 14. 14, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get my parents some more. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the baby of 14. Mm Mm-hmm. Did they all spoil you? Mm-mm. How how was it? What was it like? Mm. <laughs> mm. How was it like? Mm. God, I know you got me reaching back. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say I was spoiled a little bit uh-huh. because when they got whoopings, I didn't. <laughs> I was the one that always hid. <laughs> <laughs> so while they were getting whoopers, you was hiding. Mm-hmm. And you ain't never get them. Uh-uh. No, no, no. <laughs> uh-uh. Was, was singing already a part of the family when you were born? hmm So growing up, what was that music dynamic like? Uh, well, my daddy, he formed the um, quartet gospel group um, along with my mother and other um friends that he knew wow. um, so your mom and your dad and their friends were in a group together mm-hmm. whoa what was the group called um mm. oh the supreme gospel singers wow mm-hmm. what do you remember about that group i don't remember much mm-hmm. um yeah i don't remember too much yeah but i do remember my daddy's song most of the songs yeah he was the leader mm-hmm and then, so when did you guys, like the siblings, start singing and playing? Mm. Mm. Don't get me lying. Um, when did you sing, like, your first song, like, officially? Mm. How old were you? Five. Wow. Do you remember the song? The Blood. Wow. Mm-hmm. Was it like a church service or like a mm-hmm. concert? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Were you nervous? Mm-mm. Dang. Not that I can recall anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Five years old. Who told you to get up there and sing? Your mama? My daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't want to do it. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, me out of all the 14? Come on, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So you get up there and sing and... Did you start, because did y'all have a group back then with the siblings or that happened later? That happened later. Okay. So talk to me about the time between you singing the first song and then the group being formed. Mm. Well, the time, you mean the blood? Yeah. From the time you sung that song up until the time where 
your dad decided to put the group together with the fam? Um, well, seeing the blood, um, it kind of like, mm. <laughs> oh, my dad kind of got all of us together uh-huh. um, after that because didn't nobody else want the same, but of course me. Um, so um, during that time, there was other um, other people that was in the church. Yeah, that he got to sing along with us. Okay. Um. So um. That's when we formed a group, Snap a New Vision, um, with some of the um younger younger people that was in the church. So during that time, we decided that okay, let's just keep it as a family. Okay. And I think that was around, I'm gonna say 2000. Okay. So first it was family and young people from the church. Then it became just the family. Mm-hmm. And what, like, when, so did he sit y'all down and like, yo, it's just going to be a family group now? I think we all decided amongst ourselves. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, how old were you at the time? Mm. <laughs> mm. How old was I? Um, don't get me lying. Um, teenager, though, got to be. Yeah. I'm going to say teenager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And were you, like, excited to sing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What you love about singing? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, what I loved about singing was the fact that um, seeing other people um, interact, mm-hmm. the interaction that I got with other people, because mm-hmm. I was like, mm, these people standing up for me, mm, I'm doing something. Yeah. You know? So that was the most important. Yeah. And how long um, did you guys, because y'all still do sing sometimes now, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes. But how long were y'all singing when y'all were really singing? Mm. Some years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there any particular concert that y'all did together that sticks out? Our anniversaries. Wow. When were they? Um. Every year in January. Okay. Like every third Sunday in, in January. January. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did y'all have like a lot of preparation and stuff for it? Like rehearsing and stuff? Well, first of all, we were so bad at rehearsing, so <laughs> we didn't rehearse until the day before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, y'all couldn't get everybody together or something? We could, but because I thought, I, I think most the most thing was because we were as a family and we sung together at home, when we got into rehearsal, it was only just the musical part. Oh. Mm-hmm. But there were times where we, we rehearsed before then, but most of the time it, it was, was just like the day before. Mm-hmm. But but I would imagine though, when you when you have a family group, there's already a certain chemistry that's just natural, right? Mm-hmm. So y'all maybe y'all were like, what are we rehearsing for? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I don't see the point. Oh. Did you see it that way? Or did you want to rehearse? Back then, I saw it that way. Mm. Now I'm like, Oh, we got to rehearse. Yes. It's mandatory. Yes. Mm-hmm. So what happened that made you change the way you look at it? Um, growing up and um getting to see the world. Mm. Um even as a solo artist, um, getting to see the world and how it was and having that ear. Okay, so talk to me about that. There came a point in time where you stepped out and became a solo artist. Was that a hard transition? Um, somewhat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it hard? What was hard about it? Um, leaving my sisters and my brother. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Did they take it hard? No. They were more so for it, um, in a sense. And then they were more like, we got your back if anything, wow. you know, fails or. But you were so used to them that you were kind of like, ah. Mm-hmm. So what made, if you felt that way, why did you do it? Because I know they weren't going to do it. Ooh. Um, and, I, and sing it was more in me than it, were, than it was in them. So they know how to sing. Mm-hmm. But you really wanted to like really make something of it like for real, for real. Mm-hmm. I had the passion. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where do you think that passion comes from? Mm. <laughs> mm. I don't know, Ashley. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Has it always been there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you become a solo artist and 
you out there by yourself. Was that awkward? Sometimes. Mm. Sometimes because my um, I rely so much on my family being behind me. So going to and fro to different cities and states and stuff, it put me in a place where, okay, I got to remember that my sisters and my brothers are not behind me because I'm used to looking behind yeah. me and I'm used to hearing them pushing and egging me on. So yeah. it was different. So did you ever have any times where you're like, yo, this is tough without them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what made you keep on going anyway? Um, because I knew it was something that um has been instilled in me. Yes. Um, and more so, it was something that you know, just the love that I had for it. Mm-hmm. And couldn't nobody tell me nothing else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a good thing to have too, because people's thoughts and people's opinions can easily sway you if you ain't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. Mm-hmm. Where did you get that from? Mm, where did I get what from now? The ability to just stand firm no matter what. Mm, don't want to make this sound so spiritual, but um, I would say being in the word of God. Yes. Um, because I know who holds me. Yes. I know who's there for me. I know who will never leave me. I know who yes. will never forsake me. So. Just knowing that is all I needed. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. From your perspective, why do you think parents say because I said so? I feel like it could either mean that they know that what they're saying isn't right. So they just say that. If they're telling you to do something and they say because I said so. Why would they tell you to do something wrong? All I know is sometimes parents don't know like how to like deal with situations other than how they were treated when they were kids. And it can be where their parents told them because they said so. And it's like, oh, that's all I know, so I'm going to just treat my kid like this. Hi, this is Nay. And that was Nay's Place. If you want to catch more... Search Nay's Place on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and RXS Entertainment YouTube channel. All right, let's talk about your voice. Where do you um, get your singing style from? <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Who do you think? I think I know, but you got to tell the people. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm going to say my girl. Yeah, who your girl? Leandria Johnson. Yes, Lord. <laughs> what do you what do you like um what do you like about her that made you like gravitate towards that style? Mm. Strong will. Like toughness. Like Yeah. She just got it. Yes. Like, yes. Mm. Do you um do you find any similarities in you and her without the microphone? Somewhat. Explain the somewhat. Let's go. <laughs> uh, uh, I would say the squalling. Mm-hmm. Mm, and the ability to captivate the crowd. Yeah. The walking. Yeah. Um. You know, sometimes I feel like I was already doing that. Yeah. But when she came about, it was like, you know. Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm-hmm. So I would say those things. Okay. So let's go to, um, let's talk about life. Okay. You're going through this journey, singing with your family. You become a solo artist. As you're singing and doing these concerts, how's life? Like people see you on stage. They see you sing. They see you walk the aisle and they see in God being glorified through your gift. What's happening when you get home? Oh, sleepless nights. Um, oration. Mm. Um, slightly depression. 
um, going through um, moments of anxiety, mm. um, broken heartness. Um, yeah. And if you don't mind sharing, in any of those things, where did that come from? Um, I would say the broken heart come from past relationships. Yeah. Um, anxiety, I would say, comes from a lot of overthinking. Mm-hmm. Um, depression is wondering how, when, and the where yes. of yes. things. Um, how can I make this happen? How can I make that happen? And why <sighs> this is not happening? And why this is not happening? So, mm-hmm. yes. So when you say this and that, were you talking about like your musical career? Musical career and just my um, life itself, like things that I want out of life, because it's more to me than just singing. I yes. feel like God has, um, I feel like there is more that God has called me to do. Mm-hmm. And it's not only singing. And a lot of people will, I think people always say it's singing because that's all they have known me to do. Yeah. But there is more inside of me. Yes. So, Yeah. Yes, and then wanting those things to come to fruition has been frustrating when things don't happen Mm -hmm. at a certain time. So how have you gotten to a place where you're okay with that? I haven't. Mm, That's so good, Gabby. That honesty (laughs) is so good. So what what bothers you about it? Let's talk about it. Because I know there's somebody out here who is exactly where you are who feels like they're alone. Mm. So let's talk to somebody that may feel like they're alone. What has this process been like? What have the thoughts been? Mm. The feeling of loneliness or feeling of just being alone itself is just, it's hard. Yeah. Um, because being alone, you want someone there. Yes. And um, sometimes God will uh, isolate you and you're not wondering why yeah. you're in this season of isolation. But then the more you pray, the more you fast. And this is what I'm doing like as of now. Yeah. Um, this is what I'm experiencing in my life right now. Um, the isolation and and my questions are, well, why God, why do you have me here? And mm. you know, a lot of times we ask those questions, but why why are we here? Why am I here? Why am I dealing with this and why am I dealing with that? But this is only just a season. Yeah. That we are all going through. Yeah. And we just have to go through it. Yeah. And just believe that even in this loneliness, even in this time of being alone, that God is always there. Yes. You know, he yes. He won't leave you. God mm. is always there. He will always have the answers to your questions. Yes. And he may not come when you want him, but when he do come, he comes right on time. Yes. It's just knowing about when you have to hear you have to hear from God. Yeah. And getting in that moment with no distractions, no nothing. Yeah. And just being in his presence yes. and knowing that as long as I'm in his presence, I can get all that I need from him. Yes. That is so good. So I want to go back to the relationship thing. Mm-hmm. What has been the thing that you faced that hurt the most? Mm. Mm, I would say being lied to. Um, being lied to and not being honest. <laughs> yeah. I can go on and on about that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So when you say being lied to, are you talking like um, promises being made? Mm-hmm. Mm. Being led on. Saying you're going to do something and you don't do it. Mm-hmm. And getting someone's hopes up and you know that it's not hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you think makes people do that? I don't know because I wanted the same thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. when you ask them, why do you do what you do? It's not going to be an accurate answer. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, that's, that's always a lie on top mm-hmm, of a lie. Mm-hmm. So what's the cra- So have you ever been in a situation where you asked the guy like, why? Mm-hmm. What was his answer? It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, yeah, it was always, I got a lot going on and I hate that. And I know people have a lot going on, but specify, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Help me to understand <laughs> what you got going on. And if you don't, that's fine. 
Yeah. But if you're going to pursue me, let me know what you got going on. And then that will let me figure out if that's what I want to deal with or not. Yeah. Like open up that door to uh, opportunity for me to, you know, decide yes. if this is what I want to do or not. Yeah. But don't just leave somebody on just because like, and you don't have no answer for all you have is, oh, yeah. I got a lot going on. Yeah. I got a lot going on too. <laughs> <laughs> we all got, we all got something going on, but. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's real. But being led on is a, that's a, weird thing to do Mm -hmm. and like i would imagine that those types of things have like taken your emotions on a roller coaster how does that affect your everyday life like your work life your singing life like how does going through all of that affect your life um it well i can't say it used to affect it but it doesn't affect it as much now because i have controlled it okay okay so let's talk about the time where you couldn't control it and then what made you decide, yo, I need to control it. So go back. Why was it out of control? It was out of control because I let my feelings get too involved. Um, it became out of control when, you know, expecting things to happen that I had high expectations. Yes, ma'am. And when you have high expectations and things, you expect them to go one way. And when they don't go that way, then... You become hurt. Yeah. Um. So I couldn't control it then because I was always I I was never like a nagging person. I mean I'm a cool, laid back. Like you, long as you communicating with me and we are being honest, you good. We good. But you when, know they, what I'm when they go left, but when it go left, and I got a discerning spirit on me, so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play with it. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, but I'm learning to control it now because it's like I done been there and I done that. Yeah. And it's like um, it's nothing new under the sun. Yes. So if you tell me a lie that I heard two years ago or three years ago or four years ago, babe, I done heard that before, so now I know how to deal with it. Yeah, that's good. So when we talk about your expectations, have you have you ever gotten to a place to ask yourself if your expectations are too high? Mm, I got to that place, but I don't think my expectations are too high. Ooh, I like how you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my expectations are too high. But I feel like my expectation, expectations is the same as any other woman. Okay, okay. So for, for women out there who have expectations or don't have expectations, what are yours? Hmm. Let's go! Listen. Let's go, I'm listening. <laughs> they listening too. Hey, hey, get everybody get y'all the expectations. <laughs> um, well, my expectations is don't mm, mm. say it like it is. Tell it like it is. <laughs> say it straight. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't want to give it to me. You don't want me to give it to him straight now. You sure? Mm. I think I do. My expectations are very high. Okay. Like, don't come over here and you don't know what you're doing. Mm. Don't, yeah, don't even come over here and you don't know what you're doing. Like, um, oh, I don't even know what to say about that one. Say it. Like, I just, say it. Mm, and when you say don't know what you're doing, what are you referring to? If you don't know how to be a man. Oh. Like, I want you to, my expectations are, of a man is to be a man. Yeah. Lead. Okay. Um, and and be my peace. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. You be my peace, I be your peace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I often hate that when yeah. men say that. Just be my peace. But yeah. It's reciprocal. Mm-hmm. They want a woman to be their peace, but they're not peaceful woman. Mm-hmm. So like you chaotic for me, but you want me to be peaceful for you. Mm-hmm. Tell your nerves that gave me <laughs> all two pieces. Real bad. <laughs> Real bad. So, um, cause crazy thing is, like, I've heard a lot of men say that women actually don't like to be led. All good. You can get, hold on, y'all. What up, y'all? I'm Rajay, and I'm interrupting the pod to present an opportunity for y'all to support the brand and the fam. So do this for me. Head over to RajayXShy.com, click the merchandise tab, and grab a hoodie, t-shirt, or hat. And remember this thing. 
No matter what people say or think, live your life. Now back to the episode. A lot of men say that women don't like to be led. And I'm hearing you say you don't mind being led. Mm -hmm. What does it take for you to be willing to follow a man? As long as he's leading me the right way. Mm -hmm. um, as long as he is leading, um, you know, just basically, it's, it's more so like pursuing, like being dominant. Okay. Um, standing firm on what you want from me and what I can give you. Yeah. Um, so that's what I would say. Yeah. So you would be looking for a man to be able to like, I get it, clearly communicate that and not be lying. Yeah. Like, these are my aspirations. This is what I would love from you. This is what I can give to you. This is what I would like from you. And then you, in your mind, you're like, okay, cool. And then when it ain't, you're like, what? Well, you just you didn't lie, babe. <laughs> Come on, man. Make it make sense. One plus one equals two. Damn. <laughs> so, so have you ever, um, have you ever been with somebody where you try to make it work in spite of? Mm hmm. And what made you get to the point where you were like, okay, I'm done trying? Because he had too much going on. <laughs> Fast back to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to get too personal because yeah. the person may be watching. Yeah. And okay. may watch it. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like I had deep I had deep feelings for this person. Mm-hmm. And um Yeah. <laughs> I was willing to give this person a another chance. Uh-huh. And um he basically told me a lot of gave me a lot of hope. Yeah. That things would change and things would get better and that he will work on some things. Yeah. Because he was an overthinker and I'm an overthinker. So we basically had a conversation about that. And I was like, okay, well, if you overthink and I overthink, don't put a don't put a, help us not to put each other in situations where we're gonna overthink. Ooh, so let's help each other out. Mm-hmm. And that just went. But and I think I don't know if people will agree, but I think when you're in a relationship and you understand a thing about each other, I don't think it's far-fetched to, like, help each other out. Mm -hmm. Especially if there is transparency. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, this makes me feel this way. This makes me think this. I'm telling you straight up mm -hmm. so that we can figure out how to grow together. Because mm -hmm. I don't think any person wants to overthink. I don't think any person wants to be insecure or any of those things. But once you decide to commit to somebody, like, you're together. Mm -hmm. So let's work through this together. Mm -hmm. And I think to your point, some men can get to the place where they don't want to put in that kind of work. Mm -mm. And they're not ready. And if you're not, say that. Yeah. But Gabby, they don't know they're not ready till they step to you and then you make them realize they ain't ready. <laughs> they probably be thinking they ready. <laughs> well, if I'm the problem, let me know. Ooh. Because sometimes we may not know that we are the problem. Yeah. But what if what if a guy is like, Gabby's confident, she's firm, and I don't know how to do that? What if they feel like they scared? No, I don't mean nobody scared over here now. <laughs> Just leave me alone. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking that, like, to play devil's advocate as a man, because I know you well enough enough to know that you have a strong personality mm -hmm. and some men can't handle that mm -mm. some men just kind of like that's a lot mm -hmm. how you feel about that <laughs> <laughs> oh well <laughs> Yo! yeah, it's so well. but i'm cool though yeah yeah you know? yeah but I'm getting older. I'm 38. I'm 38 years old. Like, yeah. I don't have time. I don't have time to waste time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Life is short. Yeah. It's either you want to be in a relationship or you don't. Are you dating to marry at this point? I'm dating to marry, but don't nobody want to act right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's real. And why do you think, in your heart of hearts, when you look at the situation, when you look at what you've been through, and you say nobody wants to act right, why do you feel they don't want to act right? From from just looking at what you've heard and what you've experienced, what you think that disconnect is? 
I really can't. I I can't. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I really don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah. So men out there, if you want Gabby, keep it straight up. Mm, yeah, keep it straight up. Now, don't, don't 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 tell no lies. Okay. And don't and don't come making no promises mm-hmm. you can't keep. And I don't want no musician. Wait, why not, Gabby? Mm-mm. Explain to the people. Mm, no why, why you, I, I, I kind of said it low so you won't hear it, but <laughs> why you don't? So why you don't want a musician? Because this is good. Musicians need to know why I mean, singers don't want them. In the beginning, I did because I'm a singer and I feel like that's it's compatible. Yeah, it's compatible. Yes, but when you say no, sir, no more musicians. What made you say no more musicians? They mm, mind, babe. Explain. Well, I don't want to make this sound so... Say it, though. But I feel like, um, not only me, but I know there, is other, there are other women out there Speak that feel the same. Speak for the women. Let's go. But I feel like when you are dating a musician, you have to deal with... Um, now, which me, in, with me, I don't mind because I know I'm a singer, so I travel and I do everything. Like I, I get that. The yeah. point that you're not being at home or having time. But, you know, I feel like any... You will make time for whoever you want to make time for. Yeah. Um, but... I just feel like dating musicians sometimes it can be hectic. Yeah. Um, because you got women that are throwing themselves at him so yeah. easily, and um, he cannot want the woman, but the woman can make it seem like oh he want me and what I whatever yeah. the case may be. So and that can be some some somewhat kind of hard for mm-hmm. someone, especially a lady, mm-hmm. to like mm, I don't know if I want to date this boy. I mean, mm. yeah, and they playing right good and. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when you talk when you talk about a musician's mind, the funny thing is being a musician, like I know exactly what you mean. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know, I can't speak for any other gift or talent or industry or nothing, but I can speak for what I'm a part of. Mm-hmm. And I can say from my own experiences that there have been times where I've operated in an immature way in a relationship because of how good I am. Mm. Because I understand that I'm so gifted that I can get away with it. Mm. So, unfortunately, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> and for singers too now. Yeah. Not speaking of me, but you know. <laughs> yeah, so there, there comes a time where it can seem like Guys are so gifted that they don't transform how they think as men when they're not on their instrument. Mm-hmm. Like getting in the place of being willing to say no to certain gigs, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. being willing to say no to women, mm. being willing to be about your business mm-hmm. and don't just go do shows for zero dollars and then mm-hmm. bring bring zero dollars home because you have you was you wanted to have fun with the homies. Mm-hmm. Like, being able to communicate clearly with women, like, these are things that I know I didn't do. And I didn't do them because I was dope. That's just the truth. Sorry, guys. (laughs) I'm sorry to put us out there like that. Hey, be real. But it is true. It's Mm -hmm. like, yo, we out here. We doing what we do. We're good at what we do. People love it. So, hey, this is what we're going to do. And it's like, to a woman who wants to take a relationship serious with you, that is tough. Because then that's when we, I got a lot going on. Mm. that's when that comes in like I'm doing and the crazy thing guys is we're busy but not necessarily productive so to tell a woman who wants to come into your life to make sure that you both are productive to tell her you got a lot going on when you just doing any and everything of no value Mm -hmm. is BS Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) keep it real Mm -hmm. it really is Mm -hmm. it honestly is and like Growing up, getting older, and stepping away from it has shown me the danger of operating that way. Mm-hmm. So I know exactly how you feel. Mm-hmm. So at this point, like, where you be at? Like the doctor's office and stuff? Where you be, where you, where you be going? Uh, <laughs> where, mm-hmm. <laughs> where you be going now, bro? Mm-hmm. <laughs> going somewhere, honey. Yeah. Babysitting. <laughs> 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 So have you at this point in your life um are you single? Mhm. 
How does it feel being single? Um, I'm enjoying it. Oh, that's good. I'm enjoying it. Yes. I don't want to use the word content. Yes. Because I don't want to be content being single. Yeah. I can be only content for the moment. Yeah. But um, it's not for a lifetime. Yes. Because my intentions are, I do want to get married. Yes. Um. So, yeah. And what are your, aside, of, aside from singing, I heard you say you were called to do other things. And you do like, I've seen where you've done like women's conferences too, right? Mm-hmm. Like what inspired you to do those conferences? Oh, mm. and what's the name of the conference? Because I know you're gonna do it again, so people gotta know what's up. Um, actually, this is my second year. Let's go. Mm-hmm. What's the conference called? Um, a heal woman. Okay, what inspired you to start this conference? Mm, well, um, I was having I was having a conversation with a friend of mine um some years ago, mm-hmm. and um I was on the phone. I was like, you know what? I think it's time for me to do host an event for women. I never actually decided to do it until my father passed. And um when he passed, I was like, it's time to it's time to take off. Mm-hmm. So my first year was amazing. Mm-hmm. I had like a panel of women talking from the experience and what God brought them through. Some came from scripture and um some just basically told their stories. But um it came to me because I know a lot of women are experiencing brokenness. Yes. Um, a lot of people, a lot of women are dealing with things that they don't even talk about yeah. internally, yes. you know, and it's time to like come out with it. Yeah. So you just like whatever you are going through, whatever you are dealing with, you know, you can make it. Yes. It's not that hard. Yes. Don't be so hard on yourself. I have to tell myself that every morning, like, I can't be hard on myself. Yeah. This is just a season that I have to go through. Yes. So I was like, you know what? This is a season that is for people to be healed, be yes. healed, be set free, be delivered. Yeah. We have to come out like, you know, everybody's dealing with something. Yes. And it's time for that season of healness to take place. Wow. So you created a conference for women to come together to start the healing process. Mm-hmm. Have you found yourself in the healing process as you're doing this stuff? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't where I was last year. Okay. Wow. So from last year's conference to this conference, you've been in the healing process? Mm-hmm. How has that been? It's been better. Mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely been better. Um, Because the first year that I did it, like I said, it was after my father had passed, so I was still dealing with the grieving the grief process. of that. So, um... And then somewhat of some relationships issues as well. It wasn't so much of relationship issues because I wasn't really in a relationship per se. But yeah. just talking to someone at that time um, and just going through that process and whatever. But this year is a lot more different because I'm like, I have to do something different. Yeah. I can't be that same person as yeah. I was last year because how can I host an event about being healed when I haven't even started my healing process? Right. And the crazy thing is like, I know from experience of just seeing people do different things in a situation like yours and other people, like when they host these events and when they do these conferences, it is them giving the world or the people what they need. Mm -hmm. So it's literally an extension of you. Like Mm -hmm. I want to offer this to y'all because I need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I can, like, team up with different women to help me walk this thing out. Mm-hmm. So you get different people to speak, to, like, share their stories, to give women hope. I think that's dope. Mm-hmm. And one year I'm going to do it myself, you know. I'm going to be at that speaking. Go. So you just building yourself up. I'm too. just building myself up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I want to go back to um, talking about your dad. So you had your dad until how old were you when you lost him? Mm. 36, 37. Okay. So 36, 37, you had him for that long. And did y'all have a close relationship? Mm Mm-hmm. So did you, like, was it a sudden thing or did y'all kind of, like, know it was? Mm. Mm. Because I remember talking to you on the phone one day and you were like, I got to go see my dad. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're like, I remember you saying, we got to reschedule because I got to go to the hospital or something yeah. like that. 
at that time, was he sick? Mm-hmm. Like, how were you feeling? Mm. It's crazy because my daddy has always been in and out of the hospital for different various reasons. Yeah. For health um, reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so at that particular time, I was like, well, I don't know. It didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't feeling. I hear you. I wasn't feeling easy about that. I was I like, oh, something uneasy about this right here. Yeah. You knew it was different than all of the other times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. And then um, the crazy part and the, the part I don't like about the whole process of my daddy being in the hospital was the fact that the amount of time the doctors allow him to stay there without him even seeing his family. Oh. So that kind of peed me off a little bit. Yes, yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, but um, the night that he passed, they had called um, and said that, oh, we need a family to come to... Um, because we don't think your dad is going to make it through the night. So we all, and I had just left a hair appointment, so we all um, came out and everything. And um, during that time, um, we were all out, and, it, you know, we big out there. Yeah. So the nurses were looking like, oh, okay, let all them folks right there in now. Yeah. So they gave us a limit, and that also took. That peed you off, that too. That peed me off, too. Um, so only six of us could go out, go okay. up there to see him out of. 20 plus people that was outside. Yeah. So my sister came to me and she said, um, you might need to go out there and sing to him. And you know me, I'm like, I don't even know if I want to, I don't even, for, for one, I don't even want to see my daddy like, that. like this. Yeah. And they were like, let's go out there and sing to him, Gabriel. So while we up there, we have our phones and so that everybody else can see. So we FaceTiming. So everybody, all my other siblings and everybody can see what's going on in the room. So I'm up there singing. I was it was me and my other sister, my older sister, up there, and I started singing his favorite song that my sister wrote, "Hold My Hand." And as I was singing, well, on my way there, let's let's go back. On my way walking up there, I said, like, "God, give me the strength." Yeah. And even even the time he was in the hospital, um, I, I was praying to God, and I was like, "Well, God, if you can just allow him, allow those people to allow us to go up there to see him." Mm -hmm. You know, because I think cause he was sedated, you know, mm -hmm. so he couldn't like he could hear, but he couldn't talk. Yeah. So I said, I just want I just want you to allow us to go up there to let my father know that his family love him yes. and that we are there by his side. So, you know, walking up there, um, I said, God, just give me the strength. Mm -hmm. I said, it's because this is different. Yeah. You know, I sing at a lot of funerals and I have sung at a lot of funerals. Yeah. And I said, Lord, this going to be different. Yeah. If he don't make it through the night, this gonna be different for me. Yeah. So walking up there and I sung to him and just seeing him laying there and crying. My sister just wiping his tears and I said, I don't ever want to. I said, I don't think I can. I'm looking at my sister like mm. I can't do this. I can't do this. And she was looking like, sing to him. And I was just singing the song. I sung Hold My Hand, I sung the blood. And that was a song that he taught me when I was younger. Five years old. Five years old. <laughs> And I saw him there, and he was just sitting there, just crying. <sighs> By the time we left, my daddy passed. My mama said, that's what he wanted this whole entire time. Because she went up there before us, and my bro my older brothers and everything, they went up there before us and everything. So it's almost like he waited for that. He waited for that moment. <laughs> so that sits differently with me, but yeah, that's how I know that the work... I know there's more work for me to do. Yes. yes. And I can't stop singing because this is something that my daddy would have loved. Yes. So. so after that happened, as I'm hearing you say, it didn't stop you from singing. Mm -mm. What made you keep singing? Mm. What made me keep singing was the fact that I know that every time I sing, there's an angel always there, and that angel was him. Yeah. So I knew, and you know, you know, my dad was a singer. Yes. Like everybody knew him. Absolutely. Like, you know, to know him is to love him. So, yeah. You know, there was something that my, my dad loved to do. So, and the fact that he started me at a very young age, yeah. I, I have to keep going. Yeah. 
I have to keep going. You know, even if it ain't even for me, I'm doing it for my dad. Yeah. And it's like, it's crazy because as you're talking, like, I can see you doing your conference and telling your own story. Mm, I don't heard that so many times. <laughs> hey, I mean, I could just see it. And it's like, you, 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 you remind me that, like, our stories are, like, the music is cool. The mm-hmm. singing is cool. Mm-hmm. But, like, telling our stories is what makes the connection with mm-hmm. people. Because so many people go through these things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people feel alone. So when we tell our story, when people hear that, it's like to know that you're still strong, to know that you're still going, to know that you're creating a platform for women, like that is very inspiring, Gabby. Mm-hmm. So, and, pe- and people don't know the amount of things that I have been through. Yeah. Like this right here allowed me to tell some of what I've yeah. experienced and went through. But I was on my way here, I was talking to my friend and I told him, I said, I got a story. I said, I'm going to tell some of it. Yeah. Are you going to, um, have you thought about writing a book? Mm, no. Good idea, though. Yeah, you should think about it. Because, I mean, like, <laughs> your life is book material. Especially with what you're doing with the conference. Like, writing a book would be crazy. Because mm-hmm. people need to know, like, there's a lot of women that don't have a voice that go through what you go through like Mm -hmm. and your bravery to speak could like set women free which Mm -hmm. is why it's like good that you're doing the conference so if you do that book it's over over (laughs) so i think you should yo Mm -hmm. i'll make sure my wife buy it (laughs) and then and then i'm gonna read it (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because people need people need hope people need transparency Mm -hmm. that's another thing like it's easy for us to be it's easy for us to hide behind our gift Mm. And pretend things are cool because we're good at what we do. Mm-hmm. But it's different when you're open and transparent. Like, hey, this is my life. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all see me sing. Y'all see me play. But this is the real. Mm-hmm. This is what I go through. This is what I think about. So I appreciate you telling the part that you told today. And I look forward to you telling the rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. Before we go, is there anything you want to say? Um... Stay hopeful. Um, be encouraged. Um, no matter what life throws at throws at you, um, just know that God is fighting for you. Um, don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. Go for it. Go after it. I mean, you know, just keep pursuing. Like, remove all your distractions. Anything that's causing you to like lose focus. Yes. Stay focused on the main goal. Get out your own way. Yeah. Get out your own way. Yeah. Speak positivity over your life and just know that you can make it. Yes. Thank you for being here. No problem. Thank y'all for listening and thank y'all for watching. This has been another episode of the RXS Podcast with Gabby Smith. Peace. Peace.